morning. back to the Timmy the Toolman channel. I'm Sean and today we got a special guest, Steven, and he brought over his 1997 manual e-lock supercharged total chaos long travel Toyota 4Runner. We're going to take a deep dive into all the sick mods on this rig and we're going to take a look around. So a little history between Steven and I, we actually met through t4r.org. I had a little mod barbecue at my dad's house in Santa Clara, California, and he came over with his Toy Tech Boss Lift, and we slapped that thing on, and we've been friends ever since. We've gone on various camping trips and wheeling trips, and I've seen his rig come a long way from when I first met him. So we're going to do a little Q&A with Steven here, and we're going to learn a little bit more about his history with 4Runners and the history of this rig right here. So Steven, how'd you get into 4Runners? Did you have a 4Runner before this? And what's been the journey with this rig? So when I was 17 and I got my license, my dad actually gave me my first third gen 4Runner, but it was two wheel drive and I actually uh, crashed it when I was young. I fell asleep at the wheel on a mountain road and it was a pretty bad accident, but it crashed really well and it saved my life. So I, I really wanted to get another 4Runner and I actually ended up getting a different one, a white one in 98, uh, but it had some leaky freeze plugs in the back of the engine and I ended up selling it to get my dream one, which was a, a manual transmission 97. So I was able to go back to a green 97. I went from a green to a white back to a green. So it's pretty nostalgic for me since this is the vehicle I learned how to drive on and it's exactly the same as the vehicle my dad passed down to me as my first car. So to be able to find one and buy it uh, on my own was really, really awesome. I found it at the Nissan dealership in Concord back in February of 2014. So it's been about eight years uh, with this rig and it's just been a journey and a pleasure ever since. So can you tell us a little bit more about how this rig started its build and how it got to where it is now? When I bought this vehicle back in 2014, it was bone stock, there was nothing done to it. It was actually advertised as all wheel drive, so I thought that was funny. <laughs> and I uh, actually called the dealership about a, a different vehicle and they said, oh, we don't have that one anymore, but we have this other one. I don't know if you would want it because it's a manual transmission. And I just said, just don't sell it, I'll be right there. <laughs> and uh, I went to check it out and test drove it. And so some of the first things I did to this vehicle uh, were armor. I really wanted to make sure that uh, I didn't damage it when I went off-roading. I knew that I wanted to go to a holster in places like OHVs and different trails and stuff. So one of the first things I did was went to Bay Area Metal Fabrication in Venetia and Jerry welded on the sliders. And then after that, I was doing group buys on T4R.org to acquire all the armor. So the front bumper was first and then the rear bumper and then eventually I was in on the first 10 skid plate set from Shrockworks. So I was able to get a sweet deal on all those through group buys on T4R.org. As well as the Gobi rack, I did that from another group buy. Uh, so the group buys have really been a <laughs> savior for me for this rig over the years. I actually retrofitted headlights myself over the years uh, and had them in different forerunners, but I always had slight issues with them. Sometimes water would leak in or sometimes the projector would be bouncing around in there. And I, I really wanted a setup that it would just be warranted, so I ended up going through custom 54 lighting to get these uh, Panamera shrouds that retrofit uh, HID headlights. So I'm pretty stoked with them, there's no issues. So I always knew that I wanted to supercharge the engine, and when I found one used for 1400, I knew I couldn't say no. And I bought the URD 7th fuel injector kit and got that put in, and actually got it dyno tuned at a shop called Turbo Hoses in Livermore. And they were able to do some poles and 
was neat seeing uh, the performance on a graph. It made just under 250 horsepower and 300 foot-pounds of torque, so it was really nice seeing the torque go up that high. I also found a Tacoma that came in the wrecking yard with a set of TRD headers on it, so I was really excited to pull those and get the TRD headers put on. Also on the supercharger is a 2.2 inch pulley to increase boost. Over on this side, I have a Stinger AGM battery with the Blue Sea fuse box with the extra wiring hooked up there. I didn't like how the winch solenoid sits on the front of the bumper because it blocks the cool Toyota emblem on the Satoshi grill, so I relocated the winch solenoid to under the hood and mounted it to the, my battery box. I'm running a dual battery setup. I have an isolated battery in the rear, so I actually upgraded my alternator to a DC high output alternator. It puts out about 180 amps. So I went with the Schrockworks front, back, and underneath. So I have the five-piece skid plate set that covers the radiator, transmission, transfer case, and gas tank. In the front bumper, I have the Warren M8000 winch with the Marlin Crawler Fairlead and the Factor 55 Prolink. Up front, I have the Retrofit HID headlights from Custom 54. I have Pia fog lights. And then I used to have hella lights up front for a long time, but I switched them out for some cheap Walmart ones for now. And they seem to be working really fine for some cheap LEDs. Up top on the Gobi Stealth roof rack, I have the PL lights for driving. So under here, we got the Tundra brake upgrade. That was really important with all the extra weight we added to the vehicle. And the Total Chaos long travel kit was a very nice upgrade from the Toy Tech kit that I had for almost eight years now. I went with the boxed lower kit for the Total Chaos. It just seemed like it was the smart decision to pay a little bit more for some extra reinforcement. Part of the kit was the coil bucket reinforcement that got welded in next to the shock towers. There was also mounts for the limit straps that got welded in as well. Up front, you can see we've got the King shocks with the external resis and we welded the tabs on to mount the reservoirs. The stock Toyota spindles were a little bit weak from the factory, so we upgraded them with the Total Chaos spindle gussets. For the axles, they use modified Tundra axles with forerunner, outer, and inners. Those actually come separate from the kit. For the rear suspension, we have Old Man Emu 861 coils with Fox shocks in the rear. They're actually for a fourth gen. The Fox shocks for the fourth gen forerunner actually fit on the third gen. It says it doesn't online, but they actually mount right up. As you can see, we have some beautiful SCS F5 wheels in matte dark bronze wrapped in Nitto mud grapplers, 305 7016. I originally planned to run Goodyear MTRs, the 315s, but it turns out I, I wasn't ready to cut up the firewall yet, so that'll be another day. This truck didn't originally come with a factory e-locker in the rear, so when I re-geared the differentials to 456s, I added the e-locker in the back at that time. With the manual transmission, I chose 456s because with an auto, I heard it's comparable to 488s, and that's about the ratio that I wanted to be at. So let's take a step inside and take a look at the interior. So inside I have the seat covers from Weta Coley. They looked a lot better before the logos faded off but uh, they used to have TRD logos on them that were pretty sweet. You can see here the manual stick with the J shifter so I don't have the push button four wheel drive. So we added the air fuel ratio gauge and a boost gauge. And I also have an ultra gauge so I can see if I throw any pending codes. I have some various switches here for my lights and to engage the e-locker. I added the double DIN unit for Apple CarPlay so it's nice to have Bluetooth and maps and everything right there. I used to be really into sound systems before off-roading so I have a crazy sound system. So it's a 300 watt four channel for the door speakers and a 1200 watt amplifier for the subwoofer. It's a JL Audio 13W7. You can also see the rear isolated battery back here with the Stinger 500 amp battery isolator. Here's the ARB compressor. It's the twin compressor that we put into the cubby that used to be there. We custom made a bracket and bolted it in the cubby. So for this, it used to get way too hot attaching the hose right to here. But I figured out if you put a stainless steel braid there and you hook up the rubber hose here, the rubber hose doesn't get overheated anymore. This really dissipates the heat well. And I also run an inverter for when I'm camping. I can run any electronics or charge anything from it. So let's jump back to the exterior and just admire the glistening sun on this freshly painted evergreen pearl that just looks absolutely beautiful. I bet when this thing came straight out of the factory, it didn't look as good as this. So with the long travel kit, it's ideal to go with the fiberglass front fender. So I went with the big McNeil glass and I was really happy with that choice. They didn't line up perfectly, but I had a guy help me with the fiberglass to get all the corner markers and the lines to line up perfectly. Since the fenders only come primered from McNeil, I had to choose between painting just the fenders or the entire vehicle. 
And originally I just wanted to paint the fenders, but since I only had the hood rattle can black, I decided to paint the fenders and the hood. And then since the clear coat was completely shot on the top of the vehicle, it would have bothered me too much. So I got talked into painting the entire vehicle. So it wasn't the original plan, but I'm super happy how it came out. Yeah, it looks pretty awesome, gotta admit. Nothing like a freshly painted 4Runner. Another thing you'll notice about the exterior is we retrofitted the SR5 flares to the limited flares. So it originally came with the black plastic, as you guys know, but we got the limited flares off of another 4Runner and I got those fitted on and painted as well. It came out incredible. The main motivation to get those fenders on is because the McNeil glass sticks out significantly further than the stock fenders. And since the limited flares stick out more than the SR5 black plastic, I thought it would be a great match and it really turns out it looks awesome together. Well, we want to thank Steven for coming over here and showing off his rig, sharing it with you guys out there so you can have some motivation behind your sick mods. Just like Steven and I, we both admired other rigs before we built ours, and it kind of drove us in the direction we wanted to go with our build. So hopefully for some of you guys out there, this is some motivation, this is some goals, as they say, to get your rig where you want it to be. I've been watching Sean and Timmy grow their YouTube channel for a long time, so I'm really honored to be a part of your YouTube channel, and I really just wanted to say thank you for having me on it. It really <laughs> means a lot to me. So hello to all your viewers out there. I love your videos, and it's really cool to be a part of this channel that you're growing. Yeah, I mean, Steven's been a friend since day one, since that first mod day, like I mentioned in the intro. And it's just crazy how this 4Runner community kind of brings people together. Tim and I, Steven and I, and a lot of other people in my life that I call really good friends. So anybody that has a Toyota is a friend of mine. Yes, even Priuses. <laughs> With all that said, we want to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments about this rig, do it below. Steven will do his best to take a look here and there to answer some of your questions. Will you? Yes, I will. <laughs> if you guys want to shoot me a follow on Instagram, it's bayarea.t4r. So let's take another moment just to admire this amazing machine and all the work that's been put into it. It's been many years in the making. It didn't just happen overnight. So I hope this rig has inspired you to think about some of these sick mods and maybe go the direction Steven's gone or at least get an idea of some of the stuff that other people are doing out there in the Toyota 4Runner community. We hope you enjoyed taking a closer look at Steven's rig today and we'll catch you in the next one. Sick mods.